from Seattle. First and foremost, I want to begin this Veterans Day by honoring the extraordinary individuals who make up our armed services. Whether you're still in the uniform or not, we greatly appreciate your willingness to serve. I'm Andrew Beers, and welcome to Devs On Stage. No matter where you're joining us from right now, we are thrilled to have you with us today. And if I know this community, you have been hard at work making profound impacts with data every day. We love to see it and celebrate it. And you have continued to share your successes, your stories, and your ideas with us, all of which help shape the innovations that you'll see today. Well, as Tableau CTO, I want to personally thank you for inspiring us to build products and programs that advance our mission to help people see and understand data. Together, we can transform the world of analytics for everyone, everywhere. Now, in a moment, you're going to get a chance to geek out with five individuals from our dev team. They, along with the rest of our devs, have built some of the coolest innovations in analytics for our data community. And they have done so while adapting to our work from anywhere world. Yes, you are about to see amazing innovations built from home offices and living rooms and kitchens all around the world. I am very grateful for all their hard work, and I'd like to now take a quick moment for you to meet today's demoers. Hey, my name is Nathan Manheimer, and I'm a product director here at Tableau. I really enjoy being able to build and create things that I can then go out and see people actually using and breaking and being successful with. That feedback cycle is really fun for me. And I also love my pet cockatiel, Buddy. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I live and work in the Boston area. My background is in neuroscience, and I use this experience to help me tackle big unsolved problems. One silver lining to this past year and a half is how easy it's become to connect with anyone, and I can do it all while baking sourdough in my kitchen. Hello, my name is Issa Beacon, and I work on Tableau Prep Conductor. When I'm not building amazing features, so I'm into different types of dance and movement, especially fire spinning. I love working at a company where teams are so close-knit and cooperative. They really do feel like a hashtag data fam. Hello, my name is Alex Caldwell-Wenman. Tableau's customers are probably some of the most exciting customers that I've ever worked with. I joined Tableau because I really enjoy solving complicated problems and helping customers who are also digging into complex issues. Hey, I'm Jamar, and I work on Tableau Public. Since middle school, I've had a passion for shoes. And funny enough, they've been involved in most of the moves I've made since then. I built my confidence through shoes, and I still find it the easiest way to meet new people at work. You can always spot a sneakerhead. Nathan, Rachel, Issa, Alexandra, and Jamar, we're all excited to see what you have for us today. These five are gonna show you more ways you can harness and explore the infinite amount of data coming in from everywhere. I promise there is something for everyone today. Also, please don't forget to thank our devs on Slack or on social using hashtag data21. I know how much they appreciate hearing from you, so please keep those great comments coming in. All right, let's check. Hey, Nathan, are you ready? <laughs> Turns out he's ready. Good one, Nathan. Over to you. <laughs> As you can see, Beers, we're ready to roll. Hey, folks. My name's Nathan, and I'm excited to be here today to show you some of the features that we're building in Tableau's core analytics experience to help you push the frontiers of data storytelling even further. I've actually had an interesting story with Tableau myself. I started as a product consultant on our sales team, then I was a customer, and now I'm back as a product manager in our dev org. And throughout that whole time, I've had a chance to see some of the amazing things you've done with Tableau to unlock your data and tell really incredible data stories. But I also know that building visualizations like this isn't always as easy as it should be. Sometimes that means pulling down a few Ken Florage blog posts or reverse engineering a dashboard that you downloaded from public. With our first feature today, visualization extensions, we're going to make this experience drag and drop easy. Let's take a look. 
Here I've got the same great dashboard down in Tableau, and I love these flower type marks, but I know that building them is gonna require me to structure the data and really write some complex calcs. With visualization extensions, I can make that as easy as just a few drags and drops. All I have to do is select a custom mark type, and when I do, I can see the marks card realign around that. Now, I just have to place some of these fields in the view to get that great flower type mark. And it's fully interactive and clickable, just like any viz in Tableau. I can even start exploring further by breaking down the viz. But that's not all. With visualization extensions, you're gonna be able to get under the hood and actually fine tune every component of the visualization with the marks designer to make sure that everything looks and functions just the way you want. This is gonna mean more native visualization types in Tableau, and you'll be able to share templates through the gallery so you can download what others have done and share your own work. We can see in a few sheets here that I have some great visualization types that are already functioning, and I can't wait to see what you're gonna build with visualization extensions. Flexibility and customization don't just end with Vizs, though. I've seen dashboards out there that are truly dynamic, data-driven applications. Sometimes, building that level of customization takes a few hacks to glue everything together. But with our next feature, dynamic dashboard layouts, you're gonna be able to make that just a few clicks. Here, I've got a dashboard that shows my sales over time, and I also have some details about those sales. I wanna see those details, but only when I focused in on a specific time range. Using dynamic layouts, I can use a parameter that I've placed in the dashboard to hide those details away. And for example, select two weeks of sales in December. Now that I'm ready, I can easily bring those details back and focus in on that time range. What we're doing is using dynamic layouts to tie a parameter to whether we show or hide this container in the dashboard. So we can see that using the option, I can select that parameter and make sure I'm looking at the dashboard and the vises exactly the way I want. We could use calculated fields and because we're able to use parameters, we can also tie those to dashboard actions. So that you have fine grained control based on the data of exactly what your dashboard looks like. Flexibility and customization is great but visualizations and dashboards are only as good as the data underneath them. Tableau has always been about helping you see and understand your data, and increasingly, that means using spatial analytics to better understand the world around us. For example, here, I've got a data set of all of the counties in Washington state, and I have a question. I wanna understand exactly how fire impacted the state in 2021. In the past, this might have meant creating a single integrated data source with spatial joins to tie together different data sources. With our new feature, multi-data source spatial layers, that process is as easy as connecting to a different data source and dragging in that data. Here, I have a second data source that includes all of the information about fires in 2021, and I can start dragging and dropping. I just bring in that spatial shape add in some details about those fires, and I can highlight things by changing the color and immediately see where fires impacted the different counties in 2021. I have a next question though. I wanna understand what was the largest fire this year? I can answer that right away with Tableau's new spatial area calculation. This calculation is gonna let me simply pass in a spatial geometry, specify my units, and I've now easily computed exactly how large each part of the spatial file is. All I have to do is drag that into my visualization, and right away, I can see that the Schneider Springs fire in Yakima County at about 161 square miles was the largest in the state. With just a few more clicks, I can turn this into a dashboard that I'm ready to share out with my colleagues. Seeing and understanding data, though, sometimes means looking past the visualization to actually see the row-level details behind it. I've seen you use view data to help get deeper in data and even pull out subsets of a data set to continue sharing and helping other people answer the same questions that you have. 
We've also heard your asks for more customization and control of what we can do with the view data experience. And with a newly redesigned view data, I have full control over exactly what I see. When I get down to the row level, I can still see the data just like I always could. But I can now control exactly what I see by removing columns, changing their order, even sorting, and adding in additional fields. And of course, I can always pull down the data as a CSV that will respect the design changes I've made to share around. This is just our first step though, and going forward, you're gonna be able to publish a curated view data experience with your dashboards so that your end consumers see the row level data just the way that you intended. Speaking of those end consumers, we wanna make sure that your dashboards are performing just as great as they look. And we've heard your ask for a little bit more help in making sure that things run great. With our last feature today, the workbook optimizer, we're gonna be able to do just that. When I go to publish this workbook, I now have a new option that I can select to run the optimizer. And when I do, Tableau will automatically scan through my workbook and look for potential areas to improve performance. I even get suggestions on how to take action so that I can slim down unnecessary data sources or improve long running calcs. So I have the assurance that my workbook is gonna run buttery smooth from design to delivery. We've had a chance to see some great features here today that are gonna push the frontiers of what's possible with Tableau and allow you to tell impactful, detailed data stories. I can't wait to see what you're gonna come up with next. And speaking of pushing the frontiers, I'm excited to hand things over to my good friend and colleague, Rachel Kalmar, who's gonna tell us a little bit more about what Tableau is doing with augmented analytics. Take us away, Rachel. Hey, thanks, Nathan. I love answering questions with data. I know that you do too. Your data is constantly changing and updating and refreshing. You can't keep track of all of that. And that's why you use Tableau. We're making it even simpler to know when you have data changes that need your attention. Introducing Data Change Radar. Data Change Radar is constantly monitoring your dashboards behind the scenes so it can let you know if there's an outlier or an anomaly that needs your attention. Now check this out. This icon's telling me there's been a meaningful data change. What happened? When I go into my workbook, I see a list of data changes right next to my dashboard and in my workflow. I see that Sean Miller's sales were higher than predicted. Data Change Radar shows me Sean's sales history, makes it really easy to see the unexpected change. Now this tells me what changed, but why did this change? Coming soon, we're bringing all the power of explained data to help you understand data changes. And you don't even need to leave the side pane. You can just click on explain the change and we give you a list of possible explanations. Let's take a look at the first. This is showing all of Sean's sales. We can see that there's been one really big sale. Way to go, Sean. Now, I went from getting a notification about a data change to understanding what changed and why so easily. Tableau did this for me automatically. We're always expanding explained data. This really helps me understand what's going on at the mark level. But what if I'm looking at a brand new viz? Coming soon, Explain the Viz is bringing everything you know and love about Explain Data to the dashboard level. Here's a workbook about electric cars. I'm not super familiar with this data. What are the important things I should be looking at here? Explain the Viz is going to help me navigate this. I click on the Discover button, check out what happens on the right side pane. Explain the Viz is giving me suggestions of what I might want to focus on first. It's telling me that 2010 has some explanations. I see that is interesting. Range is kind of all over the place. Now what's going on here? Explain the viz tipped me off that something interesting is happening in 2010. Now I'm going to use explain data to help me understand why 2010 is interesting. When I click on this, it brings me right into the explain data experience for this mark. Now, all of this is happening in the right side pane next to my dashboard, it's always available wherever I am in my workflow. Now, 
This is saying that range is higher for 2010. I click in, I can get a list of explanations. Now this is new. I can go into an explanation and whether I'm a viewer or an author, I can pop this out so I can take a closer look. Now this is telling me that all of the 2010 electric car models purchased in Washington were Tesla's. Well, this makes sense. Tesla's do have an excellent range. Now, the super cool thing here is that make of car isn't even on this dashboard. Think about all of the steps you would have to take today to get here. As a viewer, I have to go back and forth with an analyst to figure out which fields I wanna include. And then I'd have to ask someone else to add these to my dashboard for me. Explain Data did this automatically. It's like giving everyone their own personal analyst at the click of a button. From dashboard to details, Explain Data is giving me the information that I need to know. That's not all. We have a bunch of exciting new improvements to Ask Data too. We have a brand new share button that lets you share visits directly from your dashboard to Slack or a Tableau notification or an email. We also have a brand new feedback button so that you can contact the Lens author directly from your dashboard. You can rename fields, edit descriptions, or favorite your lenses. And if you use the data management SKU, you'll be able to manage the lineage of your data lenses directly from Data Catalog. We're also adding a new kind of favorites called personal pinning and making queries even easier with Phrase Builder. And finally, we're letting you embed Ask Data directly from desktop. All of these new augmented features are making it so much easier for anyone to dig deeper and ask and answer questions with their data. And now for my friend and colleague, the dancing Issa Beacon. Cool, thanks Rachel. Electric cars of the future. Hi, I'm Issa and I work on Tableau Prep Conductor. Lately, I've been trying to work on my dance skills, and I wanted to start by looking into some song data to get a feel for what's good to move to. Let me show you how I've been using Tableau to help get some answers. Now, you saw virtual connections earlier this week, and I wanted to take a second to show you a couple of the things that make it my favorite feature this year. I've already created a virtual connection with some music data for a DJ friend of mine. They're okay with me bringing their data into Tableau and even sharing it with others as long as access to some of the more confidential tables is securely controlled. Let's take a look. We can see the seven tables I brought in from one database, as well as one data policy. Now, tables and virtual connections are visible to everyone by default, but I know I should limit access to the clients and the finances table. That's where the data policy comes in. If you look at the data policy, you can see it's scoped to just those two tables, and it limits access to just one username. I can even make sure it's working the way I want by previewing with the policy applied down below. If I view it as my friend, I see 95 rows, and if I view it as anyone else, zero rows. This functionality is one of the reasons why I'm a huge fan of virtual connections. They allow you to centrally manage access to groups of tables. Let me show you one more thing. I know the performances table has recently been renamed to US performances in the database. I don't want to spend my time finding and updating all the content that gets broken anytime there's a schema change. But the thing is, with virtual connections, I don't have to do that. I just edit the table that's changed and remap it and there's no need to make edits anywhere else. With virtual connections, handling schema changes can be as simple as just a few clicks. There it is. What could have been seven different published data sources in the past is now handled by just one virtual connection. Governing your data has never been easier, and once you try out virtual connections, I'm sure they'll be your favorite too. Now that I'm done managing my friend's data, I'm gonna start bringing in my own song data using Tableau Prep. I'll be running a prep flow to combine my song playlist with some song ranking metadata. Now, when I kick off a flow run, I'm eager to get started as soon as it finishes, so I could keep an eye on my email, but I prefer Slack. If only there was a way to link this prep flow to my Slack account. Here to save the day, it's prep notifications on Slack. I can quickly configure any flow to ping Slack when it finishes, so I can make sure that I know the instant my new data becomes available. I'll show you by kicking off my flow, which I've already configured, and just like that. Slack lets me get started using my data right away. Prep notifications on Slack make it simple to stay on top of the latest changes to your data. So this next part makes me think of rhythm. When you've got a nice rhythm going, you don't want to miss a beat. It's the same thing with running flows. When you have a chain of flows that depend on one another, you want them to start on cue, one after the other. Now you might try to make this work by running them manually, or maybe a best guess scheduling approach, 
but those can be time consuming or risky. No more. Now Tableau Prep allows you to set your own rhythm with linked tasks. If you look at the lineage for this next flow, you can see there's seven other flows that have to run before my flow can produce results. I don't feel like manually running all those flows, so instead I've added them all to just one linked task. If we edit the linked task, you can see all those flows are now scheduled to run before mine. What if one of the steps fails halfway through the process? Will I lose all my results? No worries, linked tasks can be configured to handle failing steps without missing a beat. With linked tasks, you have more control than ever over how your flows are run. No more waiting around for flows to finish. No more scheduled guesstimation. Now sometimes you're in the mood to dance to rock music. Sometimes it's R&B. Your musical taste can change pretty often, just like the cleaning criteria in your data. And when you have to make small changes to only a few values, republishing your entire flow can feel like overkill. You want your flows to adapt to your changing needs, and I'm excited to announce we've done just that with parameters in Tableau Prep. In my case, I've created a parameter for music genre, which I use to filter my data and when naming my output results. That's right, parameters in Prep can even be applied to input and output steps. What? After parameters are added to a flow, anyone who runs it will be prompted to adjust these values in a way that makes sense to them. Now, what if you're not sure what values to use? No worries, you can still use the values that were set when the parameter was first added. With this simple change, my flow can roll with whatever sounds good to me. Parameters speed up your workflow and save you from duplicating redundant work by making your flows more flexible than ever before. All right, looks like my data is ready to go and now I even have that extra content from my friend. I'm super excited to dive into this data and get my groove on, so throw it over to Alex. Thanks, Isa. I'm excited to share with you the enhancements that we're making to server and online based on your feedback. Performance matters, and when things are slow, everyone gets frustrated. So we're expanding the resource monitoring tools to make it easier for you to quickly diagnose when things are slow. I'm going to show you a favorite tool right here, and this view monitors your dashboard load times. It helps you to triage system issues and solve problems faster. It works by taking all of your dashboard load times and uses them to establish a baseline. And then from there, you can see what's running slowly and what's failed entirely. It also has the ability to click and drag across the view so you can see all the activity that's gone on within that time frame. And then from there, you can filter down to see exactly the information that you need to help solve your issues. Two other really quick things that I want to note are that you can establish a new baseline. So if you make a change to your system, you can check the performance before and after your change. And we've also added timestamp granularity to zip logs. So if you do have an issue and you need to share your logs, you don't have to pull an entire day's worth of logs anymore. Do you need help granting equitable access to your background or resources or preventing one site from taking over all the background or resources at once and blocking your server? One of our most requested features is resource limits. Resource limits works by allowing you to come in and set your default limits for your various sites. So I can say, for example, that they're all going to get four extract refreshes or they get 35 backgrounder hours. I have the ability to customize this as well. So let's say it's the end of the quarter for sales or they're approaching an important time of the year and we want to give them some additional resources, we can do that. So let's go ahead and give them 10 extract refreshes. And then when they approach the end of their quarter or their time period is ending, I can come in and I can set the default back to the way it was. When it comes to backgrounder resources, it's really hard to balance the need to scale for peak while also preserving your resources. And that's why we'll be adding auto scaling for backgrounders and it'll work with your containerized deployments. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here you can see I have three pods running on Kubernetes. And if we increase the load that's on the system, it'll automatically scale up. I've got two additional pods that are now initializing and running on the server. And let's see what happens when that load goes away. It'll scale back down automatically as well. How cool is that? With Tableau Online, we do the performance fine tuning and server management for you to make your lives easier. You told us that you need to embed Tableau content within your authenticated sites. And right now, it's really complicated and unwieldy. So now, with connected apps, it's easier to integrate Tableau in your application. Let's go ahead and create a new app connection. 
Let's name this Tableau Conference 21. And we can grant access to all of our projects or specific ones. And then there's also a domain whitelist as well. And now we'll generate our new secret. And a secret is essentially the secure handshake between your application and Tableau Online. Now we've created an app connection. From here, your engineers can connect your application to Tableau so your users won't be able to tell where your application ends and Tableau begins. And in case you're curious, this feature is also available on Tableau Server. You've also shared with us that you have a need to embed content in external public-facing sites as well. So to help with that, we've built Tableau Broadcast. It allows you to share content publicly really easily. And it allows your team to collaborate privately and build your dashboards or the information that you want to share until you're ready to share it. Once you're ready to share it, you go ahead and say, I'm ready to broadcast. And from there, you'll get a confirmation that you are, in fact, ready to make this information public. After that, you'll get embeddable code and a link that you can place into your external facing website. And now our content has been broadcast and it's publicly available. And because Tableau Broadcast is a part of Tableau Online, you can automate your flow via APIs, perform data governance, and view usage statistics. Broadcast will be coming soon to Tableau Online and we'll have more details to share about pricing at that time. And now over to Jamar, who's going to show you more about how you can display data publicly. Thanks, Alex. Hey all, I'm Jamar, and I'm a product manager for Tableau Public, the internet's largest repository of interactive data visualizations. Our community is 5 million users strong, and we just celebrated our 2 millionth published viz. That's a huge accomplishment. The public team is on a mission to become the destination for public data storytelling. We want to ensure that public is a site where the community is engaged, is empowered to work with, and ultimately understand data more effectively. Today, I'm here to share with you some of the things we've been working on to get us there. We start off where I do the majority of my cross-company collaboration, Slack. Now look, I wish I could spend the day on Twitter or Reddit with the data fam, but the reality is, at work, I spend a ton of time on Slack. What's been great is that now with some of the new public Slack integrations, I can tap into what's going on on public without jumping out of my workflow. I can search directly from Slack. So let's see what public has about Drake. Nice. And I can even set up notifications for things like visit the day or just use the Tableau app like this. Easy. Here's today's. And this app makes it really easy for me to click through and dive deeper into the Viz in public. With Viz of the Day, I'm always learning something new from the featured Viz. And it's been amazing to see how talented and artistic the community is. And there's just so much to see on public, right? But the problem was, because the community didn't have a way to find and organize it all, you relied on other platforms to connect the dots back to public. Well, we wanted to change that. So let's start with what we did with Search. Let's check out LeBron. We invested in search because we wanted to make sure you could reliably find what you've been looking for every time. And while we were at it, we wanted to make sure it looked better too. I just love how clean these new Viz cards are. Oh, I like this one right here. We've also updated the aesthetic of Viz Home to be a more comfortable place to deep dive on a Viz. We wanted to continue living up to our belief that the best place on the internet to view a Viz is the Tableau public site. It's so clean. But we all knew what would happen when we wanted to pull back the curtain on some of the coolest visits. No more needing to download and open in desktop. We've now brought full web authoring and editing to public. You can now easily start from scratch or make a copy of your favorite Viz and iterate all on the web. This has been a huge help for Makeover Mondays. And soon, we'll be supporting more connectors like Box, Dropbox, and OneDrive, which helps us take another step closer to reaching all of your data, wherever it lives, from public. We also refresh the design for profile. We know this is where you show off your portfolio, so we wanted to make sure it reflects your best work cleanly and is truly representative of the best you. And now, I'm happy to introduce the newest area of public, Discover. Discover is the place where the community can find something new or inspiring, a cool and up-and-coming creator, and easily keep up to date with what your network is working on, all in one place. 
Discover brings together the best of public, as well as visits we know you'll love, tailored specifically to what you're interested in. The first channel is personalized just for you to explore. The For You channel will grow to be the best place to view personalized recommendations on public. Some of the content you'll see in this channel will be from creators you follow, and some of it will be from others in the community that you don't. But we think what you'll see will resonate based on you and your network's activity and your areas of interest. Below there, the channels you'll see are curated topical channels that we're constantly updating. We want to make sure you're seeing interesting visits every time you visit Discover. Each visit is a completely new experience. Even more exciting, soon you'll be able to create your own channels on public so you can organize your inspiration and interests on the fly. You want to create a music channel? It's easy. Have a set of examples you want to share with clients? Just create a channel. It's public personalized for all of us. The public team has made strides in every area of public, and we're really excited to share what we have planned next with the world. From where you'll find visits that inspire you, to your experience actually creating your own, and even where you show off your best work. We're building towards a bright future that is the destination for public data storytelling. All of this and more coming soon to Tableau Public. Back to you, Andrew. Dev team, you did it again. Thank you for all your hard work on these amazing new features. I can't wait to hear what our data community thinks. If you'd like to chat with our dev team some more, head over to Twitter later today where they're available to answer questions that you might have. Until then, we've got some great sessions lined up and don't miss seven time Grammy Award winner, Beck. Have a great rest of your day and enjoy TC21.